Good day, my lovely listeners. You are listening to the Forty Orty Podcast. Tune in every week to explore inspiring stories and insightful information that dive headfirst into the world of autism and mental health. With all those tantalizing tongue twisters out of the way, let's get into the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 40 OT podcast. Thank you for tuning in for another episode. I think we're at episode 10 now, so we're in double digits. And I am so happy to have you back here listening to me and my wonderful guests, which I'm not being mistaken, we do have two guests on today. A very, you know, a very new thing on the podcast. I am joined by the chronic couple, Matt and Brandy. Hey, Thomas. Hi. (laughs) How are you doing? Doing good. Yeah, we're doing pretty great today. Yeah, excited to do this podcast with you. Yeah. Have you been looking forward to this? Because I know, I know that we, we're we're going to be talking about some something that um, I don't have a lot of knowledge on. So it's it's going to be interesting for me as well to to listen to what you guys have to say. Um, and what what is the topic of today? What are you coming here to say? Um, I think that the message that we both um, really want to spread is that um, there the connection between autism and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, It's a connection that isn't spoken about a lot. Um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is something that is extremely painful. It's a lot of widespread symptoms and it's really hard for people to get diagnosed with this. A lot of people end up getting diagnosed way later in life. And, um, and so we've gone through this, this whole process of, you know, finding out what's going on with us. Why do we feel this way? And and then over time, realizing that we both had the same thing, which is it, it's an extremely rare connective tissue disorder. And, um, and then going more into it, finding out through being more open about um, being autistic, that a lot of autistic people have a lot of the same symptoms and have contacted us and, and said, you know, wait a minute, but that sounds like me. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so we just want to get that out there because medical professionals don't tell you about it. It's severely it, under research. Yeah, it's not, there's not enough research out there. And a lot of the information out there is for kids and things like that. So yeah. we're, yeah, we're wanting to really just help bring more education to, <laughs> to things and, and yeah. bring more light to it's more than, you know, you're more than just one thing, you know, you're more than just having autism or whatever there's Mm -hmm. more to life you know there's more going on with people yeah and i think um one of the things that um is difficult about autism is that it tends to come with um i mean the medical term for it is a lot of is comorbidity which sounds like it sounds like a very strange word um but it, it basically just means that you know like something is it's it's linked to it so like mental health and one one thing that i you know that you you're coming to talk to talk about today which is um eds and um i didn't really know much about it until i sort of read over your profile but any anyway do you want to give everybody a little bit a little bit of an introduction into um who you are and what you do outside of your work and your podcast and stuff yeah you want to go first yeah, sure. Um, well, for me, I, I, I was actually more uh, of the supportive role in in all of this. Um, Brandy did a lot of the research into um, the chronic illnesses, and we'll go into more of that later. But for me, I, I've you know I've, I've been working a standard nine to five job and working from home and you know, supporting my wife, and uh, during that process, just learned so much about. Um, ourselves and the chronic illness stuff it, is what we both we have been focused on for years. Uh, but what I do for work is more just I, I work at home just doing IT work and it's it's all just I mean it's all emails and phone calls and computer stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, 
Very cool. What about you, Brandy? Um, so I am a uh, professional singer. Um, I was a background a studio vocalist um, for a while, and um, that was a lot of fun. It was in studio, so I didn't have to deal with crowds. <laughs> but um, it's something that I've just I've always loved music and had sort of a, a feeling that it was something that I needed to to be doing. So um, I had a lot of a lot of opportunities that started to kind of come and arise and. and a lot of my career started sort of picking up momentum and, um, and the schedule of that. I was in two different bands. I was working for a label back in Atlanta doing background mm. vocals on other people's albums. And, um, and so, you know, we were doing like the bar scene and, and it just really started taking a toll on me physically to the point where I had to, I had to just stop my body to just shut down. And mm. I was bedridden for a while. Um, and I just was like, wait a minute, you know, I've always kind of had these health problems and had a lot of problems when I was a kid, but, you know, I've been able to manage and push through. And, and so my, my career, um, really sort of aggravated that and made it worse because I suffer a lot with anxiety. So, um, being a singer was really tough because I loved being on stage, Good so. but I didn't like what came with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that was, that was tough and, and having my body just sort of break down forced us to be at this point where we were, I was just kind of like, what is happening? What is going on with me? And nobody knew what was going on. No doctor knew no one. And, um, and it was just such a lonely, scared place to be. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's something that, that made me sort of want to get this message out more. You know, this is a, something that is considered rare, like a rare disease, but in actuality, there's a lot of debate whether or not it's, it's not that rare. It's just completely under diagnosed because the symptoms are so vast mm -hmm. that people just can't pinpoint that's what it is. And it's actually sometimes hard to even pinpoint it until later in life. Um, and, uh, I, I gotta correct myself. I, I am autistic. I don't have autism is so like syntax is so bad, but, um, <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> yeah, we're, we actually, you don't have to worry about words here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but the, the, the thing is, is, is it, it, it's kind of funny with our autism because her strengths are my weaknesses and my strengths are her weaknesses. So there's yeah, so mu exactly. much where it's like linguist, linguistically, <laughs> I'm not saying that right. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it, she's able to just help uh, refine what I'm trying to say, like. Yeah. So like, often. Like you saying, like he's like, oh, I'm just an IT engineer. Uh, he's playing it down. Or uh, I'm just into IT. He's playing it down. He's like one of the top IT engineers and he's like an international IT engineer. I mean, he's. I, it's just it's so like, hard. He's like, oh, I do IT work from home. Yeah. Because, like, it's <laughs> no. just hard to explain. I just, I, I go into the detail. I, I want to be like, well, I connect all these TV companies and i yeah. connect to their servers well, he's and in charge of entire countries but okay. right yeah you know it's <laughs> just he just does little it work yeah well, i mean it's not like i'm recent can you can you get me in contact with some of the um some of the tv yeah. companies <laughs> liberty global i think yeah. you might know that one yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. yeah but that whole speaking of that whole like uh identifying thing that was something we we had to kind of learn like before yeah. we had always been like um when we found out we were both autistic it was like Oh, you know, I have autism or all of that. And then to, to go through social mm -hmm. media and see these other autistic individuals saying, you know, that you, you, you want to, um, do identity first language and, and say, I am autistic, not I have autism. That was something that, you know, like we're still kind of working on. We kind of slip up a little bit. Um, me more than her. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I think, um, in terms of like social media, there is a large, um em emphasis on those kind of things and um i do understand it and i think personally i do say i'm autistic because you know it's it's me it's a part of me it's not like i have a disease and i'm you know like bedridden from it and stuff it's it it is me but at the, sa at the same time like I'm, I'm i'm one of those people i'm not really too fussed like either way if that makes sense. I know with, with social media, people tend to be quite oh, yes. um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. reactive, opinionated yeah. about that kind of thing. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. Because, I mean, we're kind of like you. Like, I mean, whatever you want to 
however you choose to identify that is completely up to you and it's cool with me yeah it's cool man your choice i mean <laughs> but just to add to that point I, I remember the first one of the first posts i ever did about autism and the connection between eds um it was very very new and so i wasn't using the proper you know language and and um and somebody just came for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, they, they yeah. hunted you. Yeah, she got a little stalked there. For I ended up deleting it. I was like, oh, wait a minute. I need to like research things a little more before I Honestly. start posting things. I don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. She, she spends days sometimes working on a post to get it just right. Um, yeah, just so that you don't trigger right. anybody. <laughs> Not only that, yeah. but also like she'll, she'll uh, give me a post and I'll be like, it means this. And she's like, no, I, I don't even know how you came up with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, what does this mean to you? Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? And it's like 90% of the time. Nope, I don't get it. <laughs> and then she has to, yeah, it's it's a whole process, but it's, it's great. Like, I feel like we have some perspective with the chronic illness stuff, but also being an autistic couple, you don't see a lot of autistic couples either. No, it's, it, you are the first, um, first autistic couple that I've come across on Instagram. Like I haven't, it's, it's nice to, to have, have something different. And I feel, I feel like a lot of the, the autistic influencers, I know, I know we've talked about this word influencer before, <laughs> but <laughs> it is nice. It is nice to have, you know, a couple and how, can I ask, um, how long have you guys been together? Like, seven years seven years yeah, yeah. Ooh, been a while it's so crazy how's that going <laughs> she hasn't kicked me out yet um... <laughs> yeah. yeah no we were we dated for a year and um yeah we actually met each other um through match.com it's like a yeah like a dating site mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah i remember at the time it was still sort of getting to be a little, it was still not a hundred percent mainstream. I mean, I, I remember getting a little bit of flack for it. Like, Oh, you're just going to meet weirdos on there. You need to get out and yeah. meet people in real life. And, and now it's just commonplace. It's like the opposite. Like, Oh, you met someone in real life because <laughs> everyone meets on these you know, apps. <laughs> and so, um, we were kind of ahead of the curve there, but it oh. was, it was perfect because I, you know, just wanted to meet someone similar to me and I wasn't about the bar scene and going out and that's fine if you are, but mm -hmm. it just didn't work for me. And so it was cool. Yeah. We you like to have an idea of like who, who the person is before. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You get engaging with them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it was kind of insane because we had both been on some horrific dates <laughs> and yeah. um, when we met each other, it was just almost like, Oh my gosh, you know, you're just like me. And we both had no idea we were autistic, but we both knew that we had these chronic illness conditions that the other one understood. And, um, and that mm -hmm. was really cool because some people, uh, will use that against you, um, because they can't handle it. So, um, we just clicked immediately and we kind of start, just started hanging out like right away every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it, it's interesting though, when we first met, um, I don't, I don't think it was the first date, but it was pretty early on. We, we have these like party tricks that you can do with, uh, Oh, right. With the double jointness. Yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can both like put our feet like completely backwards almost and yeah. stuff and pop things out of joint. I mean, I thought it was, <laughs> it was, it was great for me when I was like, you know, younger. Cause I, I love to dance and, you know, things like that, mm -hmm. cheerleading and all of that. And so it was fantastic, <laughs> but it, you know, as you're older, it's not so great. Yeah. Um, she, she was always able to do like ballerina and chat the cheerleading stuff and no <laughs> yeah. problem. And then I always wondered why the teachers would always be like, you know, you're so talented or something. And it'd be like, well, I'm really not. I'm just doing the same thing everyone else is doing, but I was doing it like, you know, a little bit more flexible with a little bit more flexibility. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it makes so much sense now. <laughs> like looking back, I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, you know, cause yeah, I was able to just do a lot of things easily without having to, you know, um, go through like a stretch regimen to get yourself flexible. Um, <laughs> she just so. woke up that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so it's, um, I, I, the thing that popped into my mind cause recently I've just been, have you watched uh, Black Mirror? No. No. We, but we've heard about it. Black Mirror. Yeah. Well, there's there's an episode on there called Hang the DJ, and your your like story of going through like bad dates and then meeting each other and just being like, oh, yeah, 
Yeah. Thank God. Like <laughs> Fresh it air. reminded me of that episode, so you've got to watch it. Yes. Just to we just to know what I mean. It. Okay. It was. We were just like, oh my gosh. It was almost like someone as weird as I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went really weird on the first day. I really thought I was scaring her off at one point, but and it didn't. It didn't. So <laughs> But this is a funny thing on what our third date. Yeah. He was so nervous oh. and had gotten in his mind. She asked me out and I just I yeah. Well no, on the third day I, I did it. He had mentioned he had asked me out, but obviously, like I had mentioned, um, he had mentioned a movie he wanted to see, like Avengers or something. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna send this dude a text, and I'm gonna like ask him to go see the movie. And you know, cause screw the patriarchy, like the guy has to do it first, whatever. <laughs> and, um, and so, um, he he just got super nervous. And even though it was obvious that I'm the one that initiated the date, he said something at the beginning where he, he felt like I didn't understand. And then he started looping that I didn't actually like him. And he sort of flipped out and like, like not in front of me, but he just like ghosted me for like the whole weekend. (laughs) Yeah. No, at the end of the day, I'm like, well, it's pumpkin time. And it was like 10 o'clock at night. Like it's pumpkin time. I have to go to sleep. I'm like, are you Cinderella? I was, I was so embarrassed. It was (laughs) was so awkward. Yeah. But the thing is with, with him, with me, I found the awkwardness adorable. I liked it. And so when these guys, I would go out with them and they were all like Rico Suave, sort of like, you know, these, um, you were so baby. Yes, yes, exactly. These types. I mean, that just made me want to barf. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> give me somebody who is into like, you know, comics and like fun, obscure topics and sci-fi yeah. and, and, I yeah. Like. And so his awkwardness I felt was, was just, um, something that made him even more attractive. But luckily by that Monday, he came to his senses and, yeah, it, <laughs> and it just, got over it. It just took me <laughs> what forever. What did you say you did? Like the whole weekend, he I just like looped just over looped it? Looped and played video games and just, I, I honestly thought, I, I kept on thinking, okay, today I'll message her or I'll text her or call her. And I just, I would start to text something and it would just be like, ah, no, but she's, no, no, I can't. And it would, I just, I kept fizzling myself out. So, so funny how we like, get in our heads, <laughs> yeah. you know? It was, I mean, it really almost cost us our relationship if, if I didn't call you back. Like, yeah. I had I mean, gotten to the point where I was like, okay, I like that he's weird, but if he doesn't call me by Monday, he's going to be a little too, like too, um, timid, timid. Yeah. And shy for me. And that's not going to work. And so, yeah, because I'm a I'm I'm a lot. <laughs> so, I'm like I'm I'm a lot of personality. So, but it, it ended up and actually when he called me that Monday, it was like we talked for like four hours on the phone. Oh, both our phones died. Yeah. We put them on chargers and the whole thing. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, and so it ended up working out. But um, to go into another really kind of crazy story that a lot of people don't realize, it's like um, the uh, the view that that people have sometimes of autistic people. I mean, I've been told, Oh, you're a singer. You can speak like you're not autistic or you're, you know, a little autistic or something. And it's like, Mm -hmm. no, that's not the case. We, you know, it's just a neurotype. It's the way that our brains are made and we can do anything that you can do if we want to do it bad enough for the most part. I mean, we, um, something that happened with our, our wedding is, um, we had kind of a crazy, a crazy thing. Um, we, uh, I've always loved this show here called Say Yes to the Dress. And, um, it's, mm-hmm. it's on TLC. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And, um, they kind of show you, you know, picking out your dress and everything. And, and some people, they get their weddings filmed. And, um, and so, uh, on a whim, I just decided to send in an email, um, <laughs> because you get 20% off your dress, you know? And it, so, um, I, we, we ended up getting chosen. So our, uh, our wedding, yeah, was on, was on TLC and, um, Wow. And that was kind of cool. It was insane. And then we ended up getting a phone call from CNN. Yeah, um, CNN. Their, their morning show. Their morning show. Because of our, our wedding date is 11, 12, 13. Numbers guy. He yeah. It. <laughs> it, it, like two seconds after proposing, I'm like, so I was thinking about the wedding date. And, <laughs> 11, 12, 13. and it's like, it's not going to come around for another century. So let's yeah. let's do that. And yeah. she, she was cool with it. It was on a Tuesday of all that. things. So it really made it weird for, yeah. for a wedding. But it, we had to do the numbers. But yeah, so we got an interview. Um, we got interviewed on CNN about why we chose that date and yeah. being on sales to the dress and all of that. So that was kind of interesting. It's like, yeah, 
you know, people, um, cool. autistic people, we can be in the public eye and, you know, be, be on <laughs> TV and do anything, you know? Yeah. Defo. We, we just might need a day later to recover from it afterwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, from the sensory <laughs> overload and everything. But I will say mm-hmm. yeah, it was a lot. It yeah. was a yeah, lot, but it's like that. something that was an interesting experience. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of fun. So, um, what, what sort of drove you to start your, your podcast and your Instagram stuff? Did you have any like motive in mind or some, some goal that you want to achieve with it? Um, for me, uh, I'm the one that initially started. We both had our personal accounts and, you know, um, excuse me. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have, I have a okay. <laughs> I'm trying to like hold that back. Um, um, I was the one who initially started um, a chronic illness Instagram account, and that was based on solely the the fact that I couldn't find enough information um, of actual people with some of the symptoms that I had. It was like I was googling, and there was just all these like medical journal information, uh, this medical journal information, and then like you know vague kind of things, and um. So I, I realized that if I search certain hashtags of my symptoms, I was able to connect with people going through the same thing. And that more than anything pieced together like every step. And, um, and so I thought, you know, I think I probably need to, to make my own account so that I can also help people and give them the information that has taken me almost 40 years to learn. And, um, and so then it, it sort of so filled in from the there. market. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it was kind of crazy because then about what, three, four months ago, I started about that, yeah. talking about autism and opening up about that. And then at that point, that's when it just sort of, you know, exploded a little bit because yeah. so many autistic people deal with chronic illness. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. um, I'm sorry, go on that. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I was just going to say like that her her buildup of the chronic illness and the just the chronic illness Instagram. And then when it's, when it flipped and uh, I realized I had autism as well and, or I have, I, I'm autistic. Not, oh my gosh. I, Say I, that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry about uh, it. It's fine. Uh, oh, so bad. So bad though. If someone uh, anyway. jumps down your throat for this, I will pens- personally hunt them down. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it because I, I keep on saying it wrong. Um, no, I mean, you know, I guess there is no right or wrong. No. However you want to say it. Yeah. I mean, uh, anyways, my being autistic and realizing it with her and all the activism she had just with the chronic illness, when the autistic, cup, uh, autistic community really uh, opened up to us, it was like, whoa someone that actually gets my jokes or like people that actually like similar things. Um, I I think one of the weirdest ones for me throughout my whole life was I have this really weird cotton issue, um, (laughs) specifically cotton balls when they're pulled apart. It, it, it will, uh, loses his mind. Yeah. I'm already just even (laughs) mentioning it to you. If my mouth is dry, I'm wanting to jump out of this chair. It's a whole thing. And I, I, I really just thought that was just the weirdest thing that I had my whole life. Everyone in my family thought it was just fun to terrorize me with it. And I just ne- didn't put it together it's until a it's a, it's a legit thing. And now I'm like, Oh, okay. Now I know why. Like, it's a textural issue. Yeah, yeah. It's a big one. I have the same yeah. thing with pear skin. I can't stand pear. Oh. You know, like slightly ripe, like too overly ripe pear skin. Yes. It literally, yeah. it literally yeah. like sends shockwaves through my body of terror. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, it probably bothers you just even saying it. I'm sure. Right. Yeah, right. And, but I, I'm I'm a bit stubborn with anything. So like anything that I feel like I can't do, I try to overcome. So I mm-hmm. used yeah. to just eat pears, just dying inside, <laughs> just trying yeah. to trying to teach myself not to <laughs> not to have that reaction, yeah. but. Oh, I so relate to that. Yeah. Like I'll, I, I can tell you with my singing, I love to sing, but I have anxiety disorder. So I, I will force myself to do it. And so what ends up happening is I, I barf before every show, everybody knows mm-hmm. bandmates, everything, have a trash can backstage, Brandy's going to barf and then she'll be fine. And then I walk out on stage and I'm fine, but it's like, I'm not going to let that anxiety take over and run my life. I'm, I'm going to try my best to overcome it. Yeah. That's brilliant. And um, 
I think because my my so my past was that I used to be an an athlete. I used to compete in taekwondo. Cool. Oh, cool. And I used to go competing like around the world and stuff. And I went to some quite major competitions, competing for Great Britain. And I always, awesome. without fail, had a panic attack before every single fight. Oh, so oh, I, I understand Same. that struggle. Like, oh, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And then sometimes I remember once having one on stage and then having to barf on stage. <laughs> and so, but I've had, she a, did water, it in a, cup, though. I had a water cup and I turned around and barfed and then came back and finished the song. It was like, you know, I'm not going to let it stop me, but it, it, it just definitely adds a layer of like, just um, like a pain in the butt, you know, yeah. to, to what you're trying to accomplish. Um, that's really cool though. Yeah. So I'm not the only one that does that. <laughs> it is like, it's, it's very cathartic, isn't it? And you've, you've got to kind of face that stuff. And yeah. I think, I think that there is a heavy influence from like anxiety and, and stuff like that. And my, my, I have a very close you know, air quotation mark um, relationship with anxiety and depression. Like it plagues me. It's plagued me since I was about 14 years old and it's still continuing to uh, affect me. And I think that there is, that there is quite a high rate of mental health comorbidity as well with autism. Yes. And, and Yeah. And I'm still trying to figure out to what extent that is biological and what extent that is social. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I did my degree in biomedical sciences and I decided to look into that quite a lot. And it does seem that there are genetic factors for that kind of thing. But then there is also, but how do you measure the social influence? How do you measure the impact of bullying and being isolated and alienated and all that? Exactly. Right. So it's, yeah, it's, it's difficult in that sense. It's that, it's that expression. I've heard something about genetics, load the gun, environment pulls the trigger. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I relate to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, the environment being um, autistic and chronically ill and not knowing that for your entire life is rough. Yeah, <laughs> is rough. <laughs> like we've both been like, you know, bullied and misunderstood, and yeah, and exactly, it's same depression, anxiety, the whole thing. Well, and and the thing is too, you can be you can be depressed or anxious about something that happened years ago. And it yeah. will plague your mind for the days and you just can't break from it. Um, I, I do think uh, something that's helped both of us is meditation a little bit, but I mean, that's only going to help so far. I mean, I think there's um, meditation and medication. Yeah. Meditation <laughs> and medication. Yeah. That, yeah that's, that's I was, probably I was literally just thinking of that. You've read my minds. <laughs> meditation and medication. Yep. yep. That's the combo. <laughs> that is the combo that works. But I might put um, that in my um the title for this podcast episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that works. Feel free. That, that's kind of on brand for us. <laughs> it's funny though that you yeah, this is a good point that you bring up, you know, the mental health aspect because so many women are underdiagnosed with um autism because they are diagnosed with mental health issues instead. And mm -hmm. um, that's something that I dealt with. I was diagnosed with everything from bipolar, borderline personality um, syndrome, uh, or borderline personality disorder. Um, it was uh, anxiety, yeah. depression. I mean, yeah, just it went on and on and on. And um, and it wasn't until my therapist mentioned something about compare. She compared me to a client of hers that um, was autistic, and and it put this little like bug in my, you know, like mm -hmm. ear, like, could that Yeah. Be? You're just thinking about it, looking it up and. Yeah. And, um, and then it kind of snowballed from there, but I'd been in the mental health system for a long time. Um, and no one even mentioned autism. And the second that I was diagnosed, like my therapist was like, how did I miss it? How did I miss that? How did I not see that? You know, cause so many women are, are underdiagnosed. I mean, that, that uh, the numbers, you know, it's, I think it's like four males to one female or something. I'm not sure if that's exactly and correct. But those numbers are probably so wrong. Yeah, those numbers um, 
to be, uh, could, you know, be, be incorrect there because, um, we also, as females um, on the spectrum are able to mask, even if we're the same cognitive level as a male, we can yes. mask very, very well. Um, yeah. and so, um, and then our special interests seem to be more socially acceptable as women. It's not like trains and, mm -hmm. you know, um, something that, you know, is very obviously, you know, oh, you're autistic. That's a typical interest of a person. Um, that's autistic. No, but it, my, my special interests were makeup, hair, clothing, shoes, um, things that it's like, oh, you're just girly, but no, yeah. I wasn't just girly. I was obsessed, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you know, but, uh, that's more socially acceptable. So it wasn't any sort of red flag. Um, were you the like, like, um, sort of, um, Hermione Granger type girl when you were younger then? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, <laughs> I, I was definitely like, um, I, I was, def I was spitting out facts a lot and kind of, uh, I'm sure I'm, I was called a know-it-all. <laughs> like, um, she, she would brag little... to me about like how she would study for something like the night before and ace the, the test the next day. Cause she just like had that memory and <laughs> skill memory with that. Attention, yeah. Um, yeah. This is something though that, um, that I just found out through my evaluation, I have something called dyscalculia, which oh, is, Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was homeschooled. So, um, from, uh, all the way until my senior year and, uh, yeah, I just, it, it, it's, it's funny because for me, I liked computers. I liked math and that was what I was good at. And no one really gave it a second thought or, or look, uh, about my behaviors, but looking back on it now, it's like, it wasn't normal to spend whole weekends or months at home in front of the computer constantly. I mean, that, that probably was not a good, uh, healthy. Or what did you read? Like the DOS oh, book, like yeah. cover to cover? <laughs> My very first computer manual I read was 1500 pages at the age of 12. And yeah, read the whole thing cover to cover about nice. DOS. That, that, that was my it was my game was yeah. computers. So. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I used of... to be, I used to be a very big, I've, you know, I, I liked gaming, but I think at that age, it was more of like an escapism thing, um, mm -hmm. like gaming yeah. and stuff. It was very heavily like something that I just wanted to zone out with. Like it was, I used to be in front of the computer a lot, like, cause I didn't want to interact with people cause people were horrible in my eyes at that age. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm guilty of that too, with the gaming, uh, as well. I actually, uh, in my twenties and thirties, I mean, uh, did you ever hear of uh, world of Warcraft? Yeah. I know. World yeah. of Warcraft. I was a RuneScape yeah. person though. Oh yeah. But I mean, you understand <laughs> like you, you would, you would play like 40 hours a week in addition to whatever else you were doing in life. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was just not healthy. I mean, there were so many years of my life I've wasted. Yeah. And then he cried, like he, he converted the, the like video game addiction. He sort of like made that, you know, a little less, but then he, he started playing games on his phone more. Yeah. <laughs> so it got to the point where he was just phone gaming, like everything. It was like, and it actually reached a point where we had to have a discussion about it. Like, here. <laughs> You know, always in your phone. Like he's like running into people. You know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's when you know you have a problem. Um, but it really helped uh, understand um, myself a lot more like after you were, everything. You were stimming. Yeah, basically. I was I mean, constantly stimming with video games. I think that's uh, just like you were saying. You know, it's like you get sucked into it. It's an escape and things like that. But um, when it comes to stimming, uh, I'm very different than her. Uh, I, I don't have any like fidgets or, or like I have to move something all the time, but give me a video game. I'll play that until I, I I've forgotten to eat and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Go for days, go for days, yeah. drinking Pepsi, not realizing that it's got caffeine and, uh, not wanting to go to the toilet because you got to level up. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that is totally him like I'll, i would leave for band practice which would be like four hours and i would come back and like he hadn't moved like hasn't yeah <laughs> i'm like has the dog been out like <laughs> that, that would be a, an issue so <laughs> so um you've uh you've talked a little bit about your experience with with autism just like 
you know, going through like what life was like and, and stuff. Is there anything else that um, happened when you when you realized you were autistic? Like, what what happened to your life? Where did it take you? Um, for for me, it, it it took me into really reflecting back on the rest of my life. Um, I mean, thirty eight years of my life feeling alone and not understood and just a lot of negative self deprecating thoughts. And, um, after understanding I was autistic and then also the comorbidity of, um, having Elder Stanlos and Potts, uh, for me that a lot of events in my life where something didn't go, like I, I, wasn't able to like physically do something or like I couldn't properly communicate a view in a certain way. Yeah. It just, it really has given me a lot of permission to like, just forgive myself for messing up. And Mm -hmm. I think that really helped to just have less internal strife and dialogue. Cause I, I mean, I, I could loop on something I messed up on years ago and it ruined my whole day if I let it. Mm-hmm. But it, having that that knowledge of your of yourself and and listening to other people's experiences helps with being easier on yourself because it's it's not just the problem isn't you the problem is everybody else and how they work and how different you were at the time. Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like that that's how I felt when when I was reflecting on things. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, it really is um, eye-opening. Just just yeah. looking back, looking for all the the symptoms, and looking through, listening to people, and backtracking to different parts of your life, and just going, "Hey, you know what? Like, we had a bit of an un- misunderstanding here, and you know, I was different, and they're different, and we can go our separate ways and and feel all right about it now." Yeah. I think there's a lot of that with getting a diagnosis. Cause I feel, I feel like most people, when they say, when, when you introduce or tell someone that they have some autistic traits, they take it as, well, why, why do I have to do that? It's like, it can be the people, the people who have the most like jadedness and hatred towards people, like just because, yeah. because of their past and right. they could see no reason for it. Just adding it, just, adding on to the, the the problems that they have in their eyes but it's not about that is it it's just Mm-mm. understanding your life from a new angle that's true yes <laughs> i completely agree with that because coming from a person who basic like myself who basically just believed they were crazy i mean it's just like i had had all these other labels placed on me that were incorrect and so for me the the label of autistic made me feel better. It was like, oh my gosh, like (laughs) this explains so much. This explains like as a kid, I would have these meltdowns. I mean, just my mom said, you know, I would like hit my head against the wall and it would just be like all of these things where it would just be like, yeah, I guess I am crazy because only a crazy person would do that. I mean, and so when I, I was able to sort of, um, put this label that, that I felt like fit on me. It made me feel so much better. It made me sort of feel like I found my people now (laughs) because, um, there are other people out there just like me, other women out there that have gone through the same things. I mean, and, um, we talked about this on our first episode, but when I was a teenager, I had, I had a meltdown that, you know, I ended up like freaking out and trying to hurt myself. And I ended up in a mental health facility for teens and, you know, if, if everyone had known I was autistic, they would have recognized that as a meltdown and been able to, to probably, you know, deal with that a little bit better. Um, and I just, I just kept thinking, I can't, why can't I control my emotions? Why can't I control my thoughts? I'm just weak. You know, I'm just not as good as everyone else. And then you have society telling you that at the same time. Mm-hmm. And, um, so you close for, ones for me, when, and the people around yeah. you. Yeah. And- Oh yes. <laughs> and instantly comparing yourself with everyone else and why can't yeah. I do what they can do and Yeah. But... And it was like my my chronic illness diagnosis has explained a lot of different things, but it didn't explain everything. And it was like my mind was then hyper focusing on those things that it did not explain. And then when I 
got my official um, diagnosis of autism, I, it was like, yep, that explains everything that's left. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I could let this weight go of just like, that's why I, I did that because I don't like to have a lot of friends and I've gotten a lot of flack for that. And I just thought, you know, I guess I just didn't like having friends because there's something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. And then to see all these other people that are just like me. It's like, it just it was like this. <laughs> Welcome to the team. Look yeah, at the alien, the exactly. aliens among the human race. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. It's like you, I felt like I belonged for the first time in my entire life. I mean, yeah. really. Same, same. I mean, I think the autistic community really is awesome because they actually understand our humor, our life stories. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah what we're mentioning here on this podcast, there's other people that will be able to relate. And- I, yeah. I do. And it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I definitely it's do. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. And it was funny too, because my diagnosis came first. And then as soon as they started, you know, talking to me about it, I was like, wait a minute, my husband does the same thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, Matt, you need to, you need to ask your therapist about this. And uh, yeah. What and then, happened? <laughs> yeah. When I asked him, he was like, well, you, you, you handle things so well and you, you, I mean, I've never seen any kind of behavior from you that would, would hint towards that. And I'm like going into like past childhood things. And, mm-hmm. uh, I, I think the one that finally got him was when I was telling him I was getting chased, uh, by my younger siblings with a cotton ball and screaming in fear. And he's like, yep, that's a little spectrum me. That's this, that's, hey, call them spectrum. Like, spectrum. Okay, dude. Like that's where his Instagram name yeah, came from. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> cool. So, um, do you want to um give us give us a little introduction into what EDS is, and you know what are the main sort of symptoms, and how do they, how does that link into autism? Yes. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. So EDS is a connective tissue disorder, and there are 13 subtypes of EDS. Um, one of the more common ones is hypermobile, and that's the, the one that Matt and I both have. Mm-hmm. Um, the way that you would find out if you have EDS or not is to make an appointment with a geneticist, which a lot of times that's really hard to get a referral to because doctors want to dismiss your symptoms as something else or all in your head, and they don't want to give you that that. Yeah. referral which yeah. was really really tough to get i think and, it took us almost a year and yeah. she had to get it from an allergy specialist and then yeah. it was after he had tried for six months of failed treatments with horrible side effects and i just basically like was like send me to a geneticist <laughs> you know so um because i know this is what's wrong with me and um even though i had people telling me nope you don't have a connective tissue disorder um but I did. And some are a little bit more um, aggressive as far as symptoms. Um, vascular EDS can actually shorten your lifespan. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, the geneticist, we ask him, we're like, the type that we have, are we going to have a shorter lifespan? And he basically said, no, you'll live as long as everyone else, but it's just going to be a lot more painful for you. And it's just like, okay, well, I guess that's good. Um, but, um, you know, it's a connective tissue disorder and um, basically our, our, um, body produces faulty collagen. And since mm-hmm. collagen is the main protein yeah. that, you know, builds the structure to your body, um, and it's everywhere. It's in your joints, your skin, in your cells, your ligaments. Yeah. Cardiovascular, yeah. everything because, uh, our collagen is faulty. All of our systems are pretty much affected. And then it causes weak, unstable joints. Um, we're prone to dislocations, partial dislocations. Um, because uh, it causes heart and digestive issues. A lot of people with EDS also have something called POTS. And that's, um, that stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia. And, um, and Matt has that. And oh. then another comorbid condition of EDS is mast cell activation syndrome. And mm-hmm. I have that. <laughs> so uh, and so some- you must have a lot of allergies then. Yes. Oh, yeah. A lot of allergies. <laughs> yeah. Just and some going people- back to my <laughs> lectures at uni. Because it's like some some of the things that you're saying, it's like, I know that word. What was that word? Yes, yes. Yeah. She she has a lot of allergy stuff. Yeah. Oh, those bloody mast mast cells. They're so, they're, they're really, I I could curse here. (laughs) They're really bad. It it involves lots of cursing. Some some people, unfortunately, in the EDS community have what's called the trifecta. And um, that's EDS, um, POTS, and mast cell. 
Oh. And so um, we're lucky that, you know, we just got one of each, I guess, yeah. um, from that. But um, but yeah, if you if you uh, want to visit um, the Ehlers-Danlos Society website, that gives a lot of information, a lot of symptoms. Um, and basically, you know, you can you can kind of get more information about it. Um, pots and mast cell are are two things that that really, really suck. Yeah. They, <laughs> and, uh, they add just, a lot of pain to your life yeah. in addition to ehlers Donlos. Um, it, it's just so unrecognized by the medical community that it took me until I think 38 to get diagnosed with ehlers Danlos, mm-hmm. And, um, and that was even with at 15 going to some of the best specialists, um, for my allergies, but they just, you know, I had hives, chronic hives, um, oh, a lot of anxiety, um, they even I, described it correctly at the time. Yeah. They were like, your body's allergic to itself is is the simplistic way they put yeah. it. Basically, it's like they, they described what mast cell activation syndrome is, but they didn't have a name for it then. It was basically, uh, I think maybe four or five years ago that they they put a name for it. And, um, and it causes like really strange reactions to food, mold, heat, chemicals, um, basically chronic inflammatory systems, like you're allergic to everything. Um, but yeah. And then, and then pots like, yeah. And then the pots portion, um, uh, really it's a lot to do with blood pressure. And so if I stand up too quickly, I can faint and that's a long fall for me because I'm six foot four. Um, (laughs) I get that. I get that. My vision goes a bit blurry and I feel a bit dizzy. Yes. I think that, that's uh, just postural and, hypertension as well, because I'm quite tall as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, compression socks help with that a little bit. And then also, mm-hmm. if you're not wearing compression socks, uh, tensing up your, your calves um, to force the blood to normalize really helps. Um, but the mm. biggest thing is just when you're doing any of those kind of movements from like bending down or, or any kind of times where your head is below your chest and then you stand up too quickly you just gotta be careful yeah or like put your feet on the wall straight up and that helps um he matt was actually started this whole journey like i mean with the chronic illness thing because i knew i had issues with allergies i knew i was allergic to a lot of different foods and all of this but you know that's just basically what i was told i was you know i managed it it was fine but then one day we were at a concert and oh man yeah yeah and i i ate too much food and i told brandy that i did not feel good i needed to find a restroom really quickly and um she was dragging me along through a crowd and trying to help me and uh my hand slipped and when she turned around she saw me falling headfirst into concrete and yeah. that was woke up spitting out pieces of my teeth and, oh no yeah. Yeah, yeah it was intense crazy i thought he i was not a lot of help because he basically was just like a tree that fell straight face first arms to his side and i just started screaming and then everyone else this little girl beside me then she started screaming and then paramedics came luckily because yeah. we were at a at a concert so they were right there but um that started this whole you know like Process. research yeah. into like, wait a minute, what do you have? And then once he got diagnosed with POTS, I got diagnosed with mast cell a few years later when I got to the point where I couldn't um, go outside without having these like physical reactions where I was allergic to basically like the air. <laughs> I mean, it was just like chemicals in clothing, chemicals uh, in Target. I went to Target once and I, I couldn't breathe. I mean, it was like so many chemicals because I was my um, mast cell wasn't being treated. It had gotten to that point where I needed medication and that I didn't have because I wasn't diagnosed. And Mm -hmm. so then we both got this diagnosis and through Instagram, through chronic illness, I started realizing this pattern that people with these conditions also had this thing called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And then of course we Googled that and it was like, that's us one hundred percent, and then the job started of convincing a doctor. Oh, it's so annoying that that you have to do the work, isn't it? It's yep. like, oh yeah, yep. oh, it's it's painful. It's painfully annoying because yeah, it's like you have to do the work for it, but you also have to convince the doctor that they're not seeing something that they're supposed to be seeing, and that annoys right. them. And then you you mm-hmm. just get in some annoying little sort of. <laughs> Yep. A situation like where you loop. keep going to like tell them and they're like, nope, 
that you go back and you're right. like, nope. And then they give up and then they, they do it and they're like, yeah, you know what? You yeah. were right. Yes, yeah, so of course I was goddamn <laughs> yeah. right. Like, yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and then they, they keep on going like, well, you know, it could have been this too. And, you know, they try to make yeah. themselves mm-hmm. feel better or whatever. There's so many doctors that uh, want to just take my diagnosis and shove it in their face. <laughs> yeah. Be like, oh, really? I told you so. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. And that was a long road getting that oh, whole yeah. geneticist can take years to get into. Luckily, we got it in six months, which was a yeah. little less, but, um, yeah, and then and then once we started talking about um, autism, I started finding these other accounts of of like way too many because you know we notice patterns. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I started pattern noticing all of these autistic accounts with Ellers Danos, and then I, I you know went down that like rabbit hole of research, and it was like a very um, under researched subject um, that is a comorbid condition for a lot of people who, who are autistic. And it's like, man, why don't people, why did no one ever? Yeah, why does no one tell, tell me this, this stuff? Yeah. And I wasn't just going to like, you know, this like, you know, random doctor. I was like the best specialist and um, no one mentioned mm-hmm. it. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And then you hear of the best of the best and they're like, Oh, it's going to be thousands up front and, it's a multi-year waiting list or things like that. And it's like, I mean, it's just insane. And even now, like the, the view of autism is so um, misconstrued. Like I have a a specialist that I go to for my mast cell um, uh, syndrome. And when I'm, he's like, Oh, anything new going on? And I'm like, yeah, um, I actually was diagnosed with autism. And so I, you know, found that out. (laughs) And um, he was just like, he kind of sort of looked at me like, perplexed and was yeah and he was like but you're really high functioning and it's like really i mean i guess i appear that way on the outside but you have no idea what i've been through i mean you know you have no idea the meltdowns the you know uh things that have happened to me like i may appear high functioning and i may be a lot more functioning than a lot of other people um but you know just to be dismissed like that like he almost didn't even believe me like oh you're just a little autistic. Yeah, it's it's like it's like people as- assume that everybody puts in the same amount of work as well, like to 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 try and get get over things because you can have it's like you can you can be really 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 bad at socializing, and then you have to put in a lot of work to get to like a normal sort of level, just as like a little fall experiment. But then like if you could put in like a mass amount of effort and get really good at socializing but you could initially be really bad at it mm-hmm. and people only see the 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 peak of that don't they mm-hmm. absolutely yeah they don't understand all the, the the behind the scenes thing it's like they 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 feel like they can tell you that right <laughs> like yep <laughs> even though you, they're not yeah, you <laughs> exactly and you know it's so funny the way that that my doctor speaks and talks i was looking right at him and i'm like i wanted to be like and i think you're on the spectrum too <laughs> because i could <laughs> see it i could just see it the way he spoke Do a little of a double click yes. <laughs> double click and, it was like he yeah. didn't make eye contact with uh-huh. me anything and i wanted to be like uh you might want to <laughs> check yourself there <laughs> but yeah I didn't say that though. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. We all want to. People that usually don't respond well to that, and I, I don't know why. Well, I mean, I do know yeah. why, but they shouldn't. But it's like it is. It's almost like from this side of the fence, it's like it's it's like I don't know why. I mean, it's not you know. It's like it's been such a come join me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you you have no idea what internal struggle you're having <clears throat> because you're not willing to explore this part of yourself. You know, it's yeah, definitely. it's huge. Yeah. So um. What are the most common difficulties like do you find that are associated with EDS? Are there like things that you try to avoid or like problems that, that cause a lot of difficulties in your life, like even even like now? Um sure. I can tell you, uh chronic pain is the biggest one. I Absolutely. Mean, I read an article where a doctor actually this sounds extreme, but um a doctor actually can compared the pain that a lot of people with EDS have to the same pain as cancer patients. Um, because, uh, for, uh, s- certain times 
that when you have a flare, it's like, for instance, um, I've been in a flare for, what do you say? Two weeks? Yeah, almost a month almost now. Almost a month really. Yeah. But for the past two weeks, it's really, it's really been bad where I can't really walk. And so I have a wheelchair that I use for those instances. And I use, um, I have like two canes that, that I can use. Um, mm. and, uh, because your joints are so loose, um, And it's almost like uh, the way someone explained it, it's like you're walking, but for you walking five feet is going to be like running five miles for the average person because your muscles are working so hard to hold your body together because your, your connective tissue isn't doing it for you that um, you get tired very easily. Um, I've had constant like dislocations. I can pop my shoulders in and out and like, um, I've constantly had sprained issues, like uh, as far as like sprained ankles, um, Mm -hmm. I've lost count. And um, for women, especially um, men can be affected, you know, just as much as women. But for some reason, women tend to be affected a little bit more because of our hormone imbalances as far as like Mm -hmm. um, what we go through every month. And so because we're um, already a little bit more flexible because we have kids. um, So when we have these hormone surges, um, it makes us extra flexible. And so then you walk and you feel like your knees are going to buckle underneath you or, or something. And this is something I was able to kind of push through for most of my life. But now that I'm, I'm 39 and I'm going to be 40 in August. And it's like, um, I notice a lot of people with EDS around my age. It's like, it's almost like when your body starts kind of falling apart a little bit. And, um, it does make sense that, um, uh, women would be more sort of more regularly affected by it because I know that just testosterone, yep. which um, is obviously higher in guys, um, has has a tendency to thicken like connective tissue and has a tendency to cause like hypertrophy, looks like increasing muscle size and strength and mm-hmm. stuff. So that I I can imagine that that would affect your joints as well. So like right. Imagine in a good way, rather. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's well, why, yeah. yeah, that's that's what's funny about it is like um, we know when it's a bad pain day for her because I'll also be in pain. Um, when the weather changes, like when it's about to rain or uh, if the temperature like sharply drops down really cold, uh, I'll, I'll wake up and be like, okay, my for me, it's mostly my just major joints like knees and elbows and mm-hmm. ankles mm-hmm. Yeah. and for women it's like for, everywhere yeah for her it, it's, it's, <laughs> i'm like what hurts she's like everything uh, <laughs> um, they uh my, the geneticist who i got diagnosed first and then um you know he of course sent me to all these specialists and physical therapy and um orthotics and all this stuff and then when he got diagnosed he was like do i need to go to any of those places and and he was like no <laughs> just, he, was, he was just like you you're good i'll be all right yeah, yeah. He's like, just watch yourself don't get injured yeah. <laughs> you know like work um, out you're good yeah so yeah he said the same thing you just said that the testosterone makes his connective tissue more dense and yeah so no. it holds him in a little bit better and then i'm over here just all over the place but it's kind of a, a Do you know what i was i was thinking <laughs> about do you know those like um those sort of like wooden string structures that you can get where yes. you, it's on a platform and then uh-huh. you can like you can like push push a button and like the the string laxes and it the structure just falls down yes and you can yes. press it again and then it like that's it <laughs> yeah that is totally it yep. <laughs> yes <laughs> she just falls apart a little bit more than yeah. me that's all <laughs> <laughs> which it was really scary because i i had to stop singing for a while and for a few mm-hmm. years just to kind of get this all straightened out and I have a YouTube channel. And so someone found uh, a a local band here. We live in Asheville, North Carolina. They, they saw me singing and they asked me if I wanted to join. And I, I I cried at first because I was like, I would love to, to join this band because, um, it, I would be one of three singers. So in the past, you know, I was the only singer. So it was like four hour sets, you know, just a lot of, Mm -hmm. of pain. And, um, and so I cried because I, I just really wanted to do it. And then I thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm on the right meds. I've, I I have braces that I can use. Um, I have back braces and, you know, braces for every joint. And, um, I'm like, maybe they'll be okay with that. And so I asked them about it and was just very upfront about like, listen, I may have to 
be in a wheelchair sometimes or have a cane on stage. Is that okay? And they were cool with it. And so that not, was not only that, but she found out a, a bandmate, uh, his husband, his, uh, his wife. wife. Yeah, his yeah. wife. Has a connective tissue yeah. disorder. Yeah. I think there's different ones. There's like uh, hypermobile syndrome, I think, is mm-hmm. one, or hypermobile joint syndrome is one of them, and then and then EDS, and uh, then the different subtypes. But, but yeah, so he completely understood, and I was just so scared because sometimes in the workplace, you know, uh, it, like in the past, I've been fired from jobs because I called in sick too much or I wasn't able to do this that or sucks. that. And so I wasn't sure if they'd be like, no, you know, that's not going to be okay on stage. But it was, it was really cool because yeah, they were okay with it. And I think that more disabled performers need to be seen because, you know, we're out there too. This doesn't affect my voice, you know, so Mm -hmm. I can still sing. So, so that was cool. But yeah, it's been kind of scary because as I'm older, it's sort of affecting me more. Like for instance, last week I had to cancel band rehearsal um because i was in so much pain um it snowed here and so that caused like this this pain flare to go nuts and so it's just really tough like with eds the biggest thing i guess i could say is like waking up every morning and you just don't know if you're going to be able to walk or you don't know if you're going to be able to eat i mean it's just like you kind of crack your eye open like what's it going to be today (laughs) <laughs> the rookie bag yeah box of chocolate. Yeah, roulette. every so often you get a day where you're like it's a low pain day you feel good and then on that day you just want to do everything it's like you know let's yeah. go everywhere and then you ultimately end up overdoing it and paying for it but it's like <laughs> well, well and that's the thing i think she's had to figure out the most is when she's in those bad pain days learning to <laughs> not really be as active and uh bed rest actually it helps her a lot um to recover and it's, it's kind of good that we're both not on the same level because of like pain daily pain because we would be in trouble if we were both like <laughs> you know like having issues with walking i mean but it yeah. would be it could be done and it may happen one day who knows but at this at this point in time i'm, I'm really glad that he sort of he really does take care of me a lot um as far I'm as just like, the muscle. I, I lift stuff. That's, that's it. He, he lifts me sometimes. <laughs> but I'm like, Mr. Testosterone. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, but it's it's so crazy too. Like all of a sudden, having this 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 issue where you have to use mobility aids and seeing the the reactions from society when you mm. have a cane or a wheelchair that's that's been eye opening for sure. Or like a negative yes. reactions. Oh, or yeah. Oh, yeah. Negative Just, reactions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because well, people are like, you can, you're in a wheelchair, but you can walk. And it's like, yes. Uh, it's called. Screw like, them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's like people understand, okay, your spine's broke. Your spine's broke. You're in a wheelchair. Anything other than that, right. people don't understand. It's, it's like, like, oh, I yeah. mysteriously am cured. Yeah. <laughs> I can stand. Oh, my God. You're, yeah. you know, <laughs> your question. How's just... about we get a hammer and we take a hammer to each of your joints and see how you can walk? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then just, you know, with canes and things like, you know, what happened? What's going on? Or kids saying things but at the same time for the most part people just ignore it like they'll just look at Mm. the cane and just like look away and um and then other times it's it's unique to see people just sort of like you know make a way for you like get out of the way get out of the way you know like um kind of giving you like extra special treatment so it's kind of yeah like a weird yeah yeah it is but we we have run into other people that are using canes and wheelchairs and it's been a very interesting pleasant exchange yeah it's when, like, when that's happened we, it's like we see each other yeah you know so it's yeah it's kind of this unspoken like look you know so <laughs> it's like i see you girl <laughs> but or guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't be gender biased on this podcast <laughs> no. yeah. we're covering all the all the genders here yeah. <laughs> uh, so what measures do you put in place because you, you've talked about you know wheelchairs and canes and uh bed rest and stuff but are there any like different sort of therapies or medications um that really help with the you know the chronic pain and the difficulties of EDS. Uh, the one word, weed. 
<laughs> weed uh, helps a lot or uh, cannabis is also known and mm-hmm. uh, uh, we uh have been both actually brandy introduced me to cannabis and it's been a huge part of our regiment to manage our pain and yeah. it's also a mast cell stabilizer which i had no idea so as soon as i found that out i'm like that's yeah. why i was such a inflammatory pothead. isn't it yes. yeah I'm like that's why i've been a pothead because i feel better <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> it made sense and, and it's funny we've gone through all the different forms that you can have it and we've really found for ourselves we've made uh edible uh versions and that's really helped us to be able to just take it as medicine when we need it and, and tea and tea yeah. and yeah it's, it's good to go better for your lungs and things like that but well, yeah where whereabouts are you guys based then because I'm, I'm guessing that you must be um in one of the legal states then no actually we're not, we're not no you're not no, okay. no, no. We're, <laughs> we're um we should be though because we should be basically but, the, the, yeah. the place that we live is known as like this like city of like bohemian like you know uh it's it's like hipster yeah hip, central hippies, for... like uh just uh, yeah everyone here is just like um I don't know how to explain it, but uh, every basically you walk in and the whole place smells like weed. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're we're not we're we're in good company. Yeah, here. and so there's all of these like um, CBD dispensaries, basically just waiting for the for the mm. for the go to turn into actual like you know, um, dispensaries. Um, so yeah, but it's it's been kind of rough because when we first moved here, we didn't have a connection to find any because it's, you know, it's, and we had to just take what we got, which is super dangerous. It needs to be, um, something that is regulated. So you know exactly what strain you're getting. And sometimes that's really hard. Um, luckily Mm -hmm. we found someone here and you know, he's, he's super cool and yeah. And, um, but that took a, a while. So, um, but then on top of, on top of that, um, you know, uh, the, the right medications for me, um, so far I've, I take something called hydroxyzine and that helps neuroinflammation. It helps a lot of, um, racing thoughts, racing thoughts helps a lot with anxiety and it's also an antihistamine. And I read a study about how Mm -hmm. a lot of autistic people actually benefit when taking hydroxyzine because it helps to calm the neural inflammation and it helps with anxiety. And, um, and in fact, some children who took it, um, after they started taking it, I think transdermal patches, um, some of them that were nonverbal became verbal. And so, um, this is something that my mass cell specialist put me on for, for MCAS. Um, that's, you know, basically the abbreviation. Um, and when I researched it, it just so happened to be something that, that helped some of the, the traits and comorbid things with autism also. So, and he had no idea, even though I, yeah, I know, I know that, um, uh, antihistamines can, that they, they are, um, also a sedative unless you get it in a different form. Right. Yep. And I, I have had antihistamines before and they do sort of chill me out quite a lot because I'm, I'm on, um, I'm on multiple sedative medications, mm-hmm. not, not because because this sedative but i'm on um an antidepressant called metazapine which is quite heavy sedative um and i'm also i also know that ssris are as well so i'm on i've, I've recently gone for a, a big medication change which has been absolute hell oh, oh the, so those scary. are the worst oh, oh like, geez. Just trial and error let's just throw this and see if it works uh, it's nice nice that i i knew in my t- my head that it was short term because the worst thing is is when you know that you feel like there's no it's just never ending yeah but um my my mom has been put on teleprom as well um she's she's on it and it helps her a lot and it it has very limited side effects with me now That's and I've, I've been on it for about three weeks now and it's it's been quite good oh, it's just about so managing the anxiety now <laughs> that, exactly. that's huge that is so huge i mean yeah like uh hydroxyzine it's i'm on like a high dose and and it knocks some people out but for me yeah it's like after about a month, <laughs> i got used to i got used to that and then um it also promotes deeper sleep which i have an issue with and so when i do fall asleep it helps me to stay asleep longer but um but yeah i finally like evened out on the on the reactions on that and um and then i also take something called chromal and sodium which is a very um 
Uh, it's actually a, a drug that's a mast cell stabilizer. It's in liquid form and not a lot of people know about it. I actually found out about that through Instagram and then had to convince my doctor to put me on it. And after everything else he had tried had failed. And, um, and so then, yeah, it, that was a big one as far as my, um, my symptoms there. Um, but the That's helped a lot with their allergies yeah, and the bad food part about, about mast cell though, is that you have such a reaction to additives in medication that, um, mm -hmm. and vitamins and things like that. So in the past, when I've tried antidepressants, I end up being allergic to them. So uh, that really sucks. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. And I've tried a lot of them and they, yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's really tough to find a good medication for me. Matt has tried several of the meds for, um, for POTS and he ended up not really, what was it? Yeah. Like, not well, really... uh, the biggest thing for POTS is, um, increasing your salt intake because yeah. the biggest problem with POTS is having a low, low blood pressure. And I've mm -hmm. always had like, they're like, oh, your blood pressure is great. You're right at the you know, mm -hmm. edge of uh, perfect or whatever. And it's like, no, actually that's not good. Cause I mean, sometimes it's like way low. Oh you know, yeah. It's, it's the, 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 whatever that second number is, it just gets way too low. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Cause you have the white, the white collar syndrome thingy where you, where you see doctors, your blood pressure increases and, and all that. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Mine does. <laughs> Social interaction. Yes. Yep. So I'm out inside. Oh no. Like this. And oh, side note, um, because I have such severe reactions to chemicals, because doctors' offices are so heavy heavily cleaned, I end up having to wear a face mask when I go to the ER or all doctors' <laughs> no. offices. Mm -hmm. Because it I react to all the chemicals in there. So. Yeah. It, uh, and it, it, it's so insane because uh even though I don't have her physical reactions of like turning red or not being able to breathe because we've been together for so long and going through all this, I will pick up a smell sometimes when like before she's even in said room or whatever. <laughs> preemptively. Yeah. Preemptively. I'm like, okay, watch out over here. There's a smell like this. You want to go, oh, you know, it's just like this whole directional <laughs> thing based on smells. <laughs> Which is really cool. Like, yeah, I think you're the sniff yeah. dog. Yeah. Yes, he's like a bloodhound over here. <laughs> But yeah, and he has sort of like same issue, cologne and perfume. Oh, that sends me like over the edge. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's really tough, but, yeah. um, but yeah, yeah. It's just for you, what just braces, braces and none of the meds salt. Really... Yeah. It was just salt. And like, I mean, I take some good, like vitamin supplements that are supposed to help yeah. with pots and things He's like that. But... able to tolerate vitamins. I'm yeah. not. And so the, something about the additives, I don't know. Um, yeah. But as far as this being like something that's linked to autism, it's crazy because um, they really just don't know why. They, there's not really a there's, a, there's a not enough info out there. Reason. Um, there's a lot of speculation. <laughs> uh, some sometimes um, with with genes, uh, they have there's this thing called the hitchhiking effect, mm -hmm. which is uh, when when certain genes get passed on, for some re for some reason they get they get passed on. Um, during, during, you know, when, when those genes sort of arisen, uh, rose up, you know, ages ago, a while ago, sound very scientific right now. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, um, those, when those genes are passed on, they can, they can carry other genes that aren't particularly good for you, um, or advantageous in any way. And then they can pass it on and that can be very highly comorbid mm -hmm. with something else. So that that could be a reason because I know that in in our society today, autism is considered to be um, by medical professionals considered to be a disability. But there is always a reason for why it's around. Like, there's a reason for why ADHD is around, and that's because if you if you need someone to look after you during the night, you want someone to be able to jump up and have loads of energy, mm -hmm. just completely awake at the drop of a hat. Um, People with ADHD are great, yeah. <laughs> yep. and um, if you true. need someone to sort of sit on their own and and come up with new ideas and um, sort of invent things and stuff, then autistic minds, you know. Oh yeah, and totally. then uh, you can get that hitchhiking, and it, you know, that could be a reason. Right. Yeah. The the general consensus I've read is just that because autistic people, we have such hyper aware brains, immune system, central nervous mm, system, definitely. that it just makes 
everything a little bit more, um, yeah, just kind of express itself a little bit more. And that can mean negative things too. So yeah, cause I know sometimes if I am in a situation where even, um, where there isn't a smell or a scent or a trigger, but I just get stressed out or mm-hmm. sensory overload or a meltdown, then I will then have severe like EDS flare. I mean, hives, mast cell flare triggered by stress. <laughs> So mm-hmm. my triggered by myself. <laughs> so so about the um, like, how does marijuana help with your condition? Like, are there are there any sort of like noticeable things that you can you can tell that it helps with? Because um, I'm quite interested. I've done a lot of research into it because I find um, the to- the topic of like how drugs affect you know the mm-hmm. brain and the body and stuff right. and. Um, I, I know about the whole like th- THC and CBD and terpenes and all that stuff because it interests me. So how how does it help? For me, it, it helps because um, this is the the crazy little conundrum here. Um, a lot of people with EDS, we have to have pain management, um, and so you know, uh, opioids seem to help, but because I have mast cell, you don't want to touch those things. I can't touch them because I will break out in hives or, I mean, and if I do take pain medications, I mean, I have to be like on death's door. I mean, because I know that I'm going to have a reaction because of it. So, um, for me, marijuana was something that I didn't have a reaction to for the most part. Um, on occasion you, you do though, if you get something from someone because it's not regulated and here and, um, Mm -hmm. and they may have used some sort of chemical or something on it. And then I would have a reaction, but, um, for the most part, that's something that I was able to take for pain without a lot of side effects. Um, but I I will tell you, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Is it, is it more of, um, so what, what sort of side of, of the marijuana helps like is it the thc or the cbd or uh the combination of both because what happens for me is if i do just thc i get super paranoid um so uh the anxiety sort of gets worse so for me mixing the t the cbd with it helps kind of even it out so that i i don't like get in this like freak out loop (laughs) so and and i think the interesting thing about uh weed and the combination is it really is about um the strand and how much you take and it's all very personal to you i i I don't think anyone should really think oh yeah if same person takes this as another they're gonna have the exact same reaction everyone is so different oh yeah i know people who they just you know one puff like and they're gonna be freaking out i mean it's just Mm -hmm. it's obviously not made for everyone and i you know, have that fine line that I tow a lot where, you know, I try not to get too high because I will, I'll get paranoid. But Matt, on the other hand, he has no too high. No, I I don't know. He just becomes term. Yeah. Like, uh, like himself. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's, it's, it's weird. Uh, I mean, I think the worst side effect I'll have is, you know, hungry and little, little, uh, forgetful. But other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go, but I think the biggest thing is um, that regulation part is, you know, until it's regulated, until you are able to go somewhere and get exactly the right version with all the right combinations of terpenes and CBD and all that, it's just always going to be a a hit or miss for us, unfortunately. Yeah. I did read somewhere though. I have, I have done a lot of like, um, you know, research into the, into the benefits of, of it and there there are so many so many things that it could treat that would that change people's lives if they could get it regulated if they could yes. get it you know refined mm-hmm. and and proper and um right. dosed and and all of that and it's it it's just mind-boggling for me to hear about like all the opioid addiction and all the the, yeah. the problems with those medications oh, being yeah. so rampant when you've got this other thing that's you know, the one of the only worst things that you can really get from it in the long term would be that sometimes it can aggravate tendencies towards schizophrenia, but it, even then it, it doesn't cause it. It just mm-hmm. makes it happen quicker. Right. And it's it's mad for me. Like 
yeah exactly that people just have this stigma around it but we do have um cbd like cbd is legal in the uk now and oh, oh that's awesome i i have you know like cbd tea and and, and all of that and that really helps with my, oh, my anxiety like great. nothing helps there's like you know sure sure maybe i could like drink but that's horrible like it's really damaging for you mm-hmm. oh, yeah. i can't drink Mm-mm. definitely not a good idea turn bright red <laughs> but then cbd just helps like yeah, it really it does. just quietens down my, my mind and my, and my anxiety and it helps me sleep and it's it's it is massive for me cbd and it's oh, that's great it, it would just be nicer if it was a bit more mainstream and right. i know that there is like a heavy interaction between thc and cbd so mm-hmm. we have to oh. have less than one percent in anything so if it was like two or three percent like it would have more of a an effect like a more of a calming effect but more of an anti-inflammatory effect but we just don't have the regulations at this right. moment so in time unfair. And I think that's why it's important for all of us to like change the stigma of mm. what that is. I mean, it's like I smoke weed every day and, you know, it's just uh, the the stuff I'll get from it. Sometimes like negative comments and things. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, just, it you, to just, like, you get compared to it. You'd get compared to being like a drug addict. Yes. You? It's just like a drug addict. Even if even if it is just CBD, like people are still, oh, what about that? Right. And then um, I read this whole article by Dr. Afrin, and he's one of the top mast cell specialists in New York and has written several books. Um, I think it's uh, The Never Bet Against Occam, I think is one of his um, most uh, famous books. And he talks about how the mast cells have these like uh, can- cannabinoid receptors. And when you smoke yeah. mm-hmm. marijuana, they will attach and calm down the mast cells. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it does. It kind of helps that tremendously really yeah, you know? yeah. i can't imagine it, it just it's maddening yes that it's like you know a doctor will be like here you can have this you know uh drug dangerous. that is highly addictive mm-hmm. and dangerous and and don't take too much you'll od but this thing over <laughs> here that's natural that you cannot od on it's like you know um, or you could just go for the the, the legal high of alcohol and damage your white matter and your brain and oh, your man. liver yeah. and your organs and Oh, yeah. interact yeah. with your medication and <laughs> exactly yeah. oh, that was another thing when we first found out both that we were both um on the spectrum we were like that's why we can't drink because i mean so many i mean some people you know on the spectrum can drink just fine but like a lot of people can't and both of us would have such like crazy reactions we would be out with friends you know our family members and and you know ha- try to have a drink because we would feel pressured or something mm-hmm. and um and then both of us end up, you know, barfing, feeling like death for three days. <laughs> yeah, it's like the hangover is like quadrupled or something. Yeah. It's, it's I, I'm definitely like I'm definitely like a heavyweight in that category. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing like it take takes a lot <laughs> for me. Yeah. Yeah, but then one the the uh, the backlash afterwards is just maybe maybe you're a little younger than us so you, you haven't oh, experienced yeah, suppose, it yet yeah. but but <laughs> like a, yeah because uh, i could drink a little bit more like in high school and college and like yeah, yeah i could drink you know I, I felt almost like pressured to drink but i would never understand why like i couldn't just like bounce back the next day like everyone else you know yeah. so but uh, during the drinking was, yeah during the drinking yeah you're, was, you're superman you know <laughs> yeah. you, you get to go but but as I've gotten older, yeah, I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Like one sip and uh, we were out somewhere and I think, yeah, I was like, I just give me a little, maybe I'm just going to try it. You know, it's like mm-hmm. a margarita or something. And I looked like a lobster. Remember that? From one sip. One yeah. sip. I was so red that I was embarrassed to be in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, go home. But, but the thing is like learning about this kind of stuff and sharing this info, someone hearing or reading something on Instagram it could help open up doors and give them ideas of, oh, I need to go to this doctor. Or, oh, I can't I mean, even tell you how yeah, many people. A lot, a lot of the, the difficulties with any sort of things to do with doctors is that you sort of, you come into it a bit immature to just what medical stuff is like. You feel like that you're just going to go and they're going to give you a list of possibilities and then try out each possibility. But it's mm-hmm. more of 
you've got to collect evidence together and then try and push it on them constantly to try and get them to respond to you. That's, yes. that's the main the main thing that you've got to do if you want to help yourself. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of effort like yes. on your part. Oh, and if, you, if you've got like that. mental health and stuff, it can be so difficult. Like Oh, oh yeah. The yeah. combo yeah. is a lot. Because mm-hmm. if you mention combo that you have... Bath. Yeah, anxiety or something like that. Then their first go to is that you're a hypochondriac or you're just, you know, it's all in your head or it's you're yeah. trying to get pain pills or who knows. Oh, like, that's the biggest thing when yeah. you have like a, a pain flare that you have to go to the ER and they just send you home because they think you're a drug seeker. And uh, so it's not even worth it anymore. I'd rather no. just, you know, not go. She's had nights yeah. where it was the level of pain where we should have gone to the ER and just. We both knew it would yeah. just be sitting and waiting and nothing really coming from it. So, yeah. and it's scary I've because had you don't know. Experiences like, yeah, with, with having like panic attacks and stuff. And right, you think you're dying, and then it's like with sticking chronic you in pain. a white room, yeah, like, <laughs> sticking in a white <laughs> room just with a bright light in your face on your own, just like twitching like for hours, yes. hours <laughs> not sleeping, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh my god, it makes you worse. And then like, and then with chronic pain, you just don't know whether it's just your normal chronic pain mm-hmm. or if it's an actual injury. Yeah. And then, do I have like appendicitis, <laughs> or like, am I am I dying? Like, I mean, and then these thoughts kind of loop of like, you know, maybe I should get it checked out. And then ultimately, it's like, nope, it's just your good old EDS pain. And um, it's kind of learning after a while to recognize the difference which is really hard yeah Yeah. okay um so i feel i feel like we've 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 got through a lot there and um we've talked about a lot of things would you like to give me a couple of couple or, or triple of points um from the podcast that you want people to to go away with like you want people to remember and um take on board from what we've talked about (laughs) <laughs> it's always a hard one so don't, don't worry if you take a yeah, bit of time i mean <laughs> this is a hard one um i i think one of them is you know there's a great like online community out there for chronic illness and actual autistic adults out there uh where you can really get really the best information i think out there oh, because yeah. it, you know you've got all these research papers all this medical jargon and it just doesn't even sound real, let alone helpful. I, I feel like the communities out there online and talking to actual people that have lived and gone through these things, it, you're just able to get more out of it than yeah. your typical Google search or whatever. Right. The chronic illness, yeah, communities as well. It's like these people are, a lot of them are bedridden and, you know, this is one of their only outlets for communication or seeing another person that's also bedridden and talking and talking about your struggles. And, um, the, sometimes, you know, there's a stigma attached to, um, to social media, but in, in certain situations, it can be the reason someone has to get up in the morning, you know, because you have all of these online friends with, with people, um, that have the same condition as you have that haven't been able to walk for three or four days and you feel like you're losing your mind and you can talk about it. And so, yeah, changing that stigma and realizing that you can use social media um, for good to connect with people and to advocate for, for a, a cause or also just to get information about something that you're, you're really scared about and, and you just feel alone and don't know where to turn. Yeah. And it, I, I think a second point would be, uh, very similar to the first point is just question things more quite for yourself. No, don't just take what you see online um, at face value or what Do, your doctors told oh, you. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, like, you know, when there's something wrong with you and ev- if everyone is telling you that there's not advocate for yourself, exactly. You know, if you know something is legitimately not right or you want more insight on something, become your own advocate and and realize that you're going to get a lot of no's and you just have to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, and unfortunately, especially for women, uh, it, it seems to be like, I, I, I don't know. I've, I, maybe it's just cause I've seen Brandy go through so much of this, but 
I feel like there was so many times where she got questioned where I was like, uh, do I need to go in there and beat up your doctor? You know? <laughs> so, so that, that it's definitely, you, you got to stay strong with a lot of this. Um, yeah. it's, it's tough. And, and I think too, just, uh, making people more aware of the connection yes. um, that uh, autistic people have with EDS as a comorbid condition, because, um, you know, for, for people, for autistics who are nonverbal, they may be in tremendous pain and have the physical symptoms of EDS. Um, but nobody know that no, they may not be able to communicate that. And, um, so, uh, when I started talking about this more, um, I got a message actually from a special education teacher and was like, I had no idea. <laughs> a lot of my autistic, um, students are extremely flexible and are, you know, in pain and nobody has really, you know, um, delved into that part or aspect as much as they should have. And she told me that, you know, she thanked me and said, she's going to start telling all of her, um, the parents of her students, um, about this. And, um, so just getting that message out there, I mean, yeah, that this is a comorbid condition that, um, that affects a lot of autistic people and it's, and it's rare and there's not a lot known about it, but, um, it's something that, that more people need to know about. Is there a, a last um, last little point that you want to um, bring up? <clears throat> like changing the stigma. Or, I don't know that changing the stigma about what people think autistic people are like. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like just knowing that we're more than just people that are like whatever view you have. We're more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah because um, for me, before I was. Um, autistic. I had this view of what autism was that was deeply incorrect. Um, and it was kind of an ableist perspective, honestly. Um, and so, uh, when autism was discussed with me, it was like, um, no, I'm not autistic. No, you know, <laughs> and like, um, but I kind of went back and forth with it in my mind, you know, it like planted the seed. And, but my initial response was like, you know, no, I'm, I'm, I can't be that because the people in my mind that, that first came to my mind were, were children I had met in school that were, that were diagnosed autistic, but then they also had an intellectual disability. And so that's mm -hmm. the difference. Yeah. And, um, I think a lot of people get those two confused, um, that it's, it's a neurotype and, uh, and, um, yeah, it's, it's not what you, what you think it is. <laughs> yeah. A lot of bad assumptions. Yeah, there are a lot of bad assumptions and there's, there is a lot of stigma, but I feel like it's not, um, it's not intentional bad assumptions. I just think that people don't really know about it that much. Exactly. And we are, we, I mean, to be honest, we are a very, we are a minority, mm -hmm. you know, like one or two percent. And you could, you could argue that, you know, that's never stopped us before about trying to give equality and, and stuff like that and but we, we are sort of just starting to join the the bandwagon of awareness and stuff and hopefully it will take us to a place where it's more in integrated and we won't have to have you know so much mental health and horrible life experiences for autistic people exactly. it's like it's it's decent to the to the point where it's <clears throat> If I was ever going to consider having like a child or something, I'd have to honestly weigh up whether I want to bring an autistic child into the world. Not because they're autistic, mm -hmm. but just because That's of the world. what they'll be <laughs> exposed to. Yeah, exactly. and it's it, it does play on my mind a lot, and it's right. it's like what well, what would I do? Yeah, it's it's difficult. Yeah, um, and that that leads us into the last question, which is. What does autism mean to you? Matt, would you like to um, sure. answer this first? Yeah, um, it, it really means for me understanding my behaviors in the past in better ways. I, I feel like I'm able to process my traumas and other struggles. Like more I've learned about, the more I've learned about autism and how to cope with things I struggle with, I, I feel like it it makes those past events um, not as harsh on myself. And I, I feel like yeah. the more I've learned, the better I've been able to forgive myself for things that I've mm -hmm. misunderstood or awkward situations or, I mean, 
sometimes I even make observations of stuff that I'm just repeating back what I see, but the way I see it and the way I say it, either someone's going to laugh and be rolling on the floor or think I'm very peculiar, odd, and want to run as far away from me as possible. It's it's one of the two. So um, He's unintentionally hilarious. Many times, <laughs> yes, uh, along along it's the best way to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun, but it's 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 also it's a little difficult. But I I really feel like learning about autism has helped so much um, in growing as a person and. I, I, it's just been great. I mean, I think not knowing for almost 40 years was harder than knowing. I can't imagine. Can't imagine. How about how about you, Brandy? For me, I think what autism means to me is just um it's who I am. It's it's something that I no longer see as a disease or this horrible like tragedy to be autistic it's something that i now see as just the way that that my brain is is connected it's it's a neurotype and it's a group of people that i belong to that make me feel heard and seen and it's something that made me feel so much better about being different because mm-hmm. now i feel like being different is is better being different is more interesting. Um, being different isn't wrong. And I think that, um, being autistic for me, yeah, it's just, it's, it's who I am now. And, um, it's who I've always been. And, um, I just didn't realize it. So yeah, it's something that that's basically like set me free from this eternal loop of beating (laughs) myself up that I'm just a horrible person. And so, um, realizing that I'm not a horrible person. And that was a, a response from people around me who didn't understand me. And, um, and now it's like autism has helped me find my tribe and people that they get me and like me just (laughs) the way I am. So yeah, in ways it's made my life harder and I understand that, but in ways it's made my life better. And, um, I think that's something that we want to talk about. And the reason why we have our own podcast is just to, to get that message out there, you know, change the stigma. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. So would you like to um, give out some links? Because I know that you um, you mentioned the podcast there. Um, yeah. So is there any links and sites or places that you want people to go to? Yeah. So if you just search The Chronic Couple on YouTube or I think we've got like 11 different podcast platforms we're on. So mm-hmm. just search The Chronic Couple and you'll find us. Um, and then on Instagram, Brandy's at the dot chronic dot couple and i'm at spectrum me underscore matt on instagram yeah and yeah follow us on both of those platforms and yeah. and then um, and for more information on eds there's the ellers download society um and then from there you'll be connected to their social media platforms and um, there's a lot of information there as well as like specialists in certain areas and um and yeah a lot of good stuff there yeah um, I think that's really the main links and things we want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and and um, I'm just trying to think. There's also um, uh, he set up this really cool thing on our oh. on our Instagram <laughs> called Link the Link Tree. Or link something. Tree. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I've I've seen those so a few yeah, times. Yeah, check those out. It yeah. has like links to um to some of my performance videos, like my YouTube and um, for singing and um my uh my different accounts, you know, for for uh my career as far as a vocalist. So um, but that's you know sort of hidden in there in the link tree in case anyone wanted to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good stuff there. Yeah. So cool. And um, if there's if if there is anybody out there. <laughs> Uh, for anybody, for anybody out there and um, listening to this podcast episode, you can always listen to it for free on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. And if you want to see some more videos related to autism and mental health, you can always check out my YouTube channel at Asperger's Growth, and then obviously Instagram, Twitter, all of that stuff at Asperger's Growth. Um, guys, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. It has been great to talk to you and it's been very insightful. 
in something that I don't have a lot of knowledge on. And it's um, definitely been very interesting for me. Thanks. Have you enjoyed it? Thank yeah. you for having us. Yeah, it's we been great. We really did. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, thank you so much for re- reaching out to us. It was great. No worries. Um, so yeah, this is this has been the the tenth the tenth forty forty podcast episode. Um, we're definitely getting through them. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for coming on. And I hope to speak to you again at a later date, possibly on your podcast, if you like. Oh, yes, absolutely. Of course. (laughs) It'll be great. (laughs) Cool. Anyway, all said and done. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us monologue about autism and EDS. See you later, guys. Have a good day. This has been Thomas Henley from the Asperger's Grove channel and the 40 Oti podcast. See you later. You can say bye as well. (laughs) Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> get lost oh, <laughs> no, yeah. 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 Like that. Yeah. yeah yeah it's okay go do something <laughs> we can have different definitely various outros yeah yeah <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. yes stop procrastinating no. <laughs> get your executive functioning stuff done yeah. bye <laughs> exactly yeah. yes yes don't forget to eat bye <laughs> No, I know one. Drink your water. Bye. Yeah, that's a good one. Always need to drink water. Yes, (laughs) that's a big one. That was so fun, though. Thank you so much for having us. It was very good. No worries. Let uh, Let me just stop the recording now.